The Ben Heck Show is brought to you by Element 14, the electronic design community and online store built for engineers and hobbyists alike. Join now and browse the store at element14.com. Hello and welcome back to the Ben Heck Show. Over the years, we've made a lot of battery powered projects, but we've always used someone else's battery charging circuit. In today's episode, we're going to design our own using an integrated circuit from Microchip and our laser paint technique to make a small circuit board. Let's get started. Amazing builds, exclusive mods, cutting edge ideas, electronics, engineering, and more. Every week on Element 14's The Ben Heck Show. We started by breadboarding the circuit. This is a breakout board that allows us to easily attach an SOT235 chip to a piece of PCB. I mean, we could have soldered it by hand, but this makes it easier and makes it so we can stick it into a breadboard. The circuit's pretty simple. There are two resistors, one of which is for the indicator LED, and the other one sets the charge rate. Then we have a couple filtering capacitors and an output to the battery. So we have our five volts come in here. So that could be based off USB or some other sort of power source. Goes into the chip, and then we have the indicator light, which stays on until the battery is charged. And that's pretty much it. So let's test it out. This is the lithium ion battery from the EMF camp badges. So we got plenty of parts from those badges. Um, most lithium ion cells start at 3.7 volts and then what they do is if they want a higher voltage they put multiple cells in. So a 7.4 volt lithium ion battery has two 3.7 volt cells. Your cell phone for instance just has one 3.7 volt cell. So this circuit is designed for a 3.7 volt cell. So let's plug it in and yeah, there it goes, it's charging. Now this is a linear charger so it will get warm but we should be able to compensate for that with a copper clad surface on our PCB. Now that we know the circuit works, we can design it in Eagle. Okay, we're gonna use Eagle to design a circuit, but we need to have a part for that charging circuit. You can try to find one or you can make your own. So let's make our own. So you go to new library in the control panel, and then you go to edit a package. And the package is what the integrated circuit looks like. And uh, I'm gonna call this SOT235. Okay, create new package. Now this is your, your physical layout window where we're gonna draw it. And the main things we wanna do is are we wanna, we wanna have pads and then we wanna have a dimension. Now if you go into your PDF here, I downloaded this from Microchip. Uh, usually you find this in the data sheet for the integrated circuit, but Microchip just has a giant document for all of their stuff. So this is what we call the landing pattern of the integrated circuit that we wanna have. This is the circuit itself, this thick black line. And these are the pads around it that will actually have solder. And this indicates pin one. Okay, so we need to measure everything by the center of the pads. See this measurement here, C, and it's from pad center to pad center. That is a good clue. So C and E are actually the most important ones. Hey, CE, like consumer electronics. So C is 2.8. So from the center of the chip, if it's 2.8 between pads, that means it's 1.4 to the center of the chip. And if E is 0.95, that means the center of this one is 0.4 down and 0.95 over. So with that information, we can actually place these correctly. So I'm going to make sure we have a fairly fine pitch, finer than it needs to be. Okay, that's probably way overkill. I'm gonna click on the information and then click on the pads. Okay, so this one is zero horizontal because it's centered and it's going to be negative 1.4, okay? Then this one is going to be negative 0.95, which is the pitch spacing, and negative 1.4, okay? Likewise, this one will be positive 0.95 and negative 1.4. And these chips also, this one will be negative 0.95. Oh, I forgot to put the vertical 1.4. And this one, positive 0.95 and positive 1.4. So the big thing to remember is um, you wanna go by the pad centers and you wanna keep this in the center. Uh, as far as the shape of the circuit, that I don't really care a whole lot about. So I'm gonna draw a line and I'm gonna select, oh, I don't know, probably the place layer. And I'm just gonna draw something that represents the shape. Okay. Um, I don't usually put too much detail on that. And there's pin one. All right, now that we have the pads defined mechanically, we need to move on to the next part, which is to attach values to them. 
On my other window that we can't see, I have the data sheet open for this charger. I'm gonna go in and name these pads to match the um, data sheet. That'll make it easier to connect later on. See, it gives them a default name of P$1, but that's kind of pointless. So this is program. This one is input voltage. All right. This one is the battery. I'm just gonna use the names from the data sheet. This one is ground. And this one is status. All right, cool. Now I'm gonna to go to edit symbols. And let's see, I'll just give it the same name. Now this is what it's going to look like in a schematic view. So again, I'm gonna draw a box. Now this box doesn't have to be, you know, correct. It's just a reference for your schematic. Okay, now I'm going to add pins. So there's one, two, three. Right click to rotate, one. Okay, so those are our pins. Now I'm gonna give these names as well, and the names are gonna match what we drew in the other thing. So again, status. And if I name them the same thing, it'll make it really easy to connect later on. Because we have to connect the schematic drawing to the actual physical layout that we did. Now I'm going to go to edit device. Create a new device, yes. All right, so I'm going to add our package. So I'm gonna go down to new. All right, so that's the package that we have, yes. Now I'm going to add our part that we did. So there's a schematic and there's the you know physical landing pad of it. I'm gonna go down to connect. And since I named them the same thing, this is really easy. Sometimes you have to actually think about this. You know, you have to uh, match them up by clicking on certain ones, but these are all the same. So program, status, battery, VDD, and VSS. So I clicked through all of them and uh, now they're connected. So hit okay. All right. And we're done. We can now use this part in our Eagle layout. Now it's time for a tech timeout. We've had a lot of people ask why we didn't use the Raspberry Pi compute module in our point and shoot camera project. Well, it's too new. We haven't had time to work with it yet. Whereas the Adafruit screen that plugs right into a Raspberry Pi was a working known quantity. And in order to get our project done, that's what you have to go with, the things that you know work. The Raspberry Pi compute module, we simply haven't had time to experiment with, but we're hoping to do a project with it in the future. Now we can make the layout itself. We're gonna start with the schematic, new schematic. We're gonna go to library. The schematic view, we're gonna to go to library and use, and we wanna use the library that we just created. All right. Now we're gonna place that part. There is our chip. All right, so let's just do the typical stuff. I'm gonna add a symbol for ground. Let's just grab some, there we go, I like that one. Do, 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 do. I probably have a couple of those. You can never have enough grounds. Uh, let's see, so obviously VSS goes to ground. We have a couple capacitors. Pulse pounding capacitor selection. All right, so we have a capacitor on the battery output and then we also have one on the voltage input. So I'll just and I'll be honest, if I'm drawing a schematic just for my own use, I don't put a whole lot of effort into making it look nice. I mean, I just, you know, why? This is also, this is where you'd hook the battery up right here on the battery terminal. We don't need to add that yet, so I think we should be good. Uh, I'm gonna put this here. Actually, I guess I could just keep using this ground symbol. You know, all the grounds will be tied together, but I just, sometimes I like just, you know, connecting them on the schematic just like this. It's just, just just my way. Okay, so program uh, sets the charge voltage and we set that with a resistor. So we're gonna 
find a resistor here. 1206 is pretty good. That's a surface mount, but it's uh, easy to solder by hand. It's fairly large surface mount. I like to use that size just because, yeah, it's what I would call human solderable with no effort as well. Uh, the name, I don't care about the name, but I do care about the value. This is a 2K resistor and the capacitors. So yeah, so this, this is the name, which is what it's called, but we let it auto name it, capacitor one, capacitor two, but the value you want to set. So we click the value, then we click on the thing. So this is uh, 4.7, this one's also 4.7, there we go. Now status goes to uh, an LED. Probably just gonna use a little three millimeter LED, which has the same hole pattern as a five millimeter LED. Oh, here we go, three millimeter LED. All right, copy the resistor. But that one's not gonna be 2K. We'll probably use, uh, I don't know, 470. And then here, um, well, okay, so you can do this. It's kind of sloppy, but see how there's a little ball here? That means there's a connection, but here you don't see it, which means we're skipping over that. Oh, that's kind of a mess, but it will work. Again, I'm not making this to be pretty. I'm just making this to work. Uh, let's see, so this is where the voltage would come in. I think it might be cool to have a USB port on this, so the USB port could just be used for powering it, so I'm gonna add that. All right, so, uh, we're not using the data, we're just using the USB for power. So we connect ground, and then we connect five volts to our input. Yeah, I think that's everything. Let me just double check. So the five volts comes in here, goes into VDD, VBAT goes here, and this will hook up to our battery. Ground does as well, and we have two capacitors, programming resistor, yep, I think we're good. So once the schematic is ready, we go to generate board. So I'm gonna start arranging these. Now, one thing to think about is if we use laser paint, it's a lot easier to make a single-sided board. We've done double-sided with laser paint, but it is a bigger pain in the butt. So if you think about a USB connector, it has through hole on it. So the connections for the USB will be on the bottom of the PCB, but all of these parts are meant to be on the top. So if you put the USB connector on the same side of the PCB as all these parts, the connections wouldn't work. So what we have to do is we have to mirror the parts, which puts them on the bottom of the PCB. So for each part, we're going to click mirror, which is this object. So see how the pads changed color? They went to purple, which means they're now on the bottom. So we're gonna actually put all these things on the bottom of the PCB. So the top of the PCB will just have the USB connector and all the parts will be on the bottom. There also won't be any traces on the top, but we will have our LED sticking through the top. All right, so I'm gonna arrange these parts and draw the traces. And then we will have, hopefully, a working circuit. I'm gonna to try to make it as small as possible, too. I finished designing the circuit for the charger. Uh, see how everything's purple? That means it's all on the bottom of the board, although the USB and the LED will be on the top of the board. Now, to do my laser paint method, or you know any kind of you know homebrew PCB method, I'm going to want to get rid of most of the layers now that's none. We want the bottom pads, vias, and then dimension. Let's see. Okay, so this is like the important stuff that we actually need in order to make our file. Now that I have only the things that we need selected, I'm going to go up to File, Export, Image, Browse to, okay, we're in the right place. I'm gonna make it a bitmap. Laser, laser charge, that's a cool name. Resolution, I'm gonna go full resolution, 1200 dots per inch, which is what the laser can do. Uh, all right, I'm gonna export that. Now, I'm using Photoshop, but you could use any sort of program that you have. And the pulse pounding navigation scene is back. Here's our bitmap file. I'm going to start by cropping it to the dimension lines. That'll be the size of the PCB. I'm gonna use my paint bucket tool to make sure the vias are black. That'll just make them easier to drill. Okay. Like that. I 
The colors don't matter um, because, it's, because it's going to be black and white. So I'm going to make a slight adjustment here. Yeah. We don't actually need that, that pin, so I'm going to just remove it. All right, so we want to use our magic wand tool. Select all the black color, make a new layer. Then we're going to go to layer and, or I'm sorry, we're going to go to select inverse the selection, get our paint bucket, get the color white and paint it. So when this is on the laser, the laser will burn away where it's black and leave where it's white. So when we etch it, the white will remain as copper and the black will be bare board. The next step is to print this black and white image directly to the laser. Time to assemble the circuit. Now, if you recall, these are on the bottom. That's because if you put the USB through the top and it's through hole, you want it to be able to connect. That's why we had to put everything on the bottom instead of on the top. Uh, but I had these USB plugs, mini USB with through hole, laying around. I already had a pattern for them, so that's why I used them. This is the resistor for the LED. I should really be using my helping hands for this. I'm going to attach the charging IC next. This part's kind of delicate, but laser paint can do it. You know, if, if I touch this, it's going to tombstone or stick to the iron. I'm adding the plug for the battery connection, and then that should be everything, assuming it works. I made a few changes to my circuit because we had multiple copies of this board. I drilled holes through the pads of the surface muck capacitors so I could put through hole capacitors on, allowing me to put the small capacitors on this side, keeping all the components on one side, at least all the through hole components and uh, this just makes it more efficient, so it's smaller now. We still have the service mount parts on the bottom here. And I've been logging the battery voltage and time. Let's see, 3.865, cool. So it's definitely charging up this PlayStation 4 battery as it's supposed to. So now we have a single cell circuit that we can use in future projects. That's all the time we have for today. In the next spooky episode of The Ben Heck Show, it's time for Halloween, so Ghost Squad Part 2! No, I'm just kidding, actually. I wish we were making Ghost Squad Part 2. We're actually going to be making an electronic, mechanical, hacker-friendly mask for Halloween. We'll see you then. Ghost Squad 2. Go, 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 Squad! I sense Allison's psychic hand can sense ghosts. So dumb. Over the years, we've made a lot of, but we've never really had our own personal and create our own linear battery. We've never, and make a laser painted, <laughs> damn. you know, the first one was probably good. And you're, okay. <sighs> well, nothing's on fire. That's why she freaks out about everything. She watches too much news. Oh, yeah. I think I jinxed it. Kill me? Okay, hold on. Kick it. I said kick it. Oh, I thought you wanted me to kill you. I mean, you're trapped in a corner. It'd be easy to kill you. The Ben Heck Show was brought to you by Element 14, the electronic design community and online store built for engineers and hobbyists alike. Join now and browse the store at element14.com.